Good morning, Dr. Maria. You know this face now, by now. Yes, um, coming to you and welcome to this space. I'd like to say good morning to everybody in Aotearoa. Good morning to all the audiences now um, coming in from over the ditch in Australia. Today we're talking about obesity. Um, yeah, obesity. Now, about 25, about 20, 25 years ago, um, at my heaviest, I was between 127 and 135, floating in between there. I was getting a bit um, crook in my mind, so I went to the doctor. Now, my doctor said to me, if I did not, if I did not sort out my weight or getting weight loss in there, um, in the next 15 to 20 years, I may be in a casket. Uh, there was lots going on, high blood pressure. Uh, yeah, there was just, just there was too many things going on. Now, how did I lose my weight? And where am I today with that? Now, listening to my doctor, um, it took me a while, but I needed to really think about um, my addictions. Now, we all have food addictions, don't we? We have uh, that particular kai or sweetie or chocolate, whatever it is, uh, that we get addicted to. And back then, I was addicted to just eating just for the sake of it. It wasn't just eating. And now, yes... It could have been depression, it could have been anxiety, but I didn't have any of those before I got big, okay? So, I just went out and ate and ate and ate, and blah, 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 but it also had a, a big, huge uh, impact on my health. The luck, lucky I went to my doctor. Now, um, if I did not change the way I lived, changed my habits, my doctor said, and now why I'm posting it, because he said back then, um, in the next 20 to 25 years, I probably um, could die. Um, simply because I was reaching um, obesity, uh, which has mean my body was getting larger than my heart. Yes, um, so it took my heart, it was taking my heart lots of pumping, more work uh, to get the blood flow, get everything around in my body. So back then I changed my habits. Now, I'm not sure if you guys know, realise in Gisborne, there wasn't back then, there's a lot of eateries here. There's a lot of temptations here. And I live out by Sponge Bay, and taking a drive from Sponge Bay just to the Wainui um, Four Square shops, there's actually 17, 17, get the 17 eateries, where the probability, the possibility, sorry, of me just tuning in and buying hot chicken. Okay, now to overcome your addictions, you've got to try and really think about what your health, I did, every time I wanted to drive in, I mean, sorry, we'll go back to the 17 um, eateries, isn't that kind of disgusting? Now that's before we even get into town. So even though they tell us to watch our behaviours, watch our addictions, I don't understand why the council, or why, um, um, all these new eateries uh, that are coming into our city are getting approved. Someone's approving all these unhealthy, um, really unhealthy, um, temptation, temp tempting us to buy these unhealthy foods. You've got chickens and chips signs all down Winery Road. Okay, that's one. Then you have all these um, garages and shops and yet they've got all these yeah you go to a dairy but right there there's also this we're tempted by hot pies oh and these bakeries everywhere um, i counted 22 bakeries in gisborne why do we need all that but anyway let's go back um to our behaviors and addictions so we have a lot of um, behaviors and addictions that we need to overcome to ensure that our health which is our tinana, because remember this is um, Food Bank Gisborne, food for your hininaro, your tinana, and your wairua. So really we've got to be uh, making sure that the, the food for our tinana is healthy. We have to. We've got to make sure that works. I don't know how many times, I mean, we just have to look around us and we do have a large, very large um, community of people in Gisborne, Taira Fitu, who are um, who are obese and reaching obesity to the max? Okay. 
I used to be fat. Well, I used to be called fat and large back in the day. And I wanted that those little co those comments to stop also. We have to really think about um, our families and the impact, especially financially, the impact that it has. For example, a person with obesity would need more food, which is more money, to come into the household to ensure that they get fed well too. We need more um, people to realise that it's actually our own behaviours and it's our own temptations that's putting us over the line and get overweight. I have a friend which who is who um, they have three large um, people um, who are all obese and they wouldn't mind that me talking about just as long as I don't say their names but I've got a family of like there's three people all obese they have tamadakin teenagers now what disturbs me is while they're sitting there they're telling all the kids and everyone to do anything oh I can't get up I can't move shut oh we'll or oh, can you please go there and go and feel like make me a cup of tea to me, I'm in my brain, I'm going, why don't you get up off your ass and go and make your own cup of tea? And it's making those choices about, do you want to sit there and continue to dwell in your, you know, misery of being depressed or the misery of being, um, you know, only your chair. That's your life, sitting there. Like, here's an example they gave me. Um, yes, they, 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 they are. They feel really mamaya about having to tell their teenage, um, you know, mokos and cousins or whatever, the skinny ones, to do all their mahi. But the other th embarrassing thing was they realised that, okay, they do get around, but they're always sitting. They're not exercising, okay? I had to include some exercise in my regime. It's bloody hard. But I'm like this now simply because I overcame my own temptations and my own addictions. Yes, obesity can be hereditary in the or it's a genetic thing in some families. But you don't have to continue the behaviours that's associated with uh, that genetic gene. Yes, and I've come across families that um, tell me that they wanted me to post this because they're sick and tired of being in the place that they are. They're sick and tired of um, telling everybody what to do while they just sit on their, their asses. They're, very, they're, they're embarrassed to even sometimes go into public because they're simply just large and fat. Yes, there are lots of things that, um, that causes people to stay large, which is depression or anxiety or these things happening in their, around in their lives. But there has to be a moment that you have to really go, okay, that's not me anymore. Now, I already know, um, prior for any of us being large, we didn't have depression or we did. Sometimes it can kickstart the um, being large and getting fat. Yes, it does. We have choices, guys. We have to get past those temptations. We have to get past our personal habits when it's around food. We have to do it because no one else can do it. Only you can. Only we can as friends to support you and hopefully not enable you to continue those temptations and those habits. I stand here 85 kgs simply because I really had to make um, definite choices and it's all about this little heart thing, the, the thicker, you know, the heart where it pumps everything around. It needs to pump all the blood, everything all around. It can't do it if it's your body is this huge. Okay? So for me to you, let's think about those temptations how you manage them, how you work around them. How we change the, our um, behaviours and our habits. For example, I used to always hop in my car. The first chicken and chip shop I used to go, was the Palenada. But now, I'm making the conscious decision 
decision that when I see chicken and chips sign, I go, Ugh, and then I quickly think about something else and I drive past. Now that alone has taken up to 10 to 15 years for me to drive past. So I've now beaten my temptation and I've beaten my personal habits around food and it's not easy. Surround yourself with people that don't enable you. Surround yourself with people that will encourage and help and support you because it's all about your heart, eh guys? Your heart. Without that going, this here, the tinana, the wairua, the hinilaro, all disappears. Keep that ticket going, guys. Do it for your children. Show them that if you can do it, they can too. Okay, this is my corridor around obesity. Let's make some change, Fano. Do it for your future. And do it for your mukos and your teenagers' future. Because they're looking up to you, us. Because if we can do it, they can too. Let's stop obesity. Let's stop everybody getting fat. There we go, guys. Yeah. Stay skinny. Try. Just try. Okay then. That's me. I'm going to have a cup of tea. Have my banana. Changing habits. I used to like eat... Oh, just... Well, a big plate full. But anyway, today it's a banana. Cup of tea. Take care of your health. Take care of you. And let's show our tamariki and our mokos that we can do it, they can too. We don't have to have a tyra fruity full of obesity. Fano. Tired of it. Let's stay alive, guys. There we go. Kaki there. And welcome to all of you new um, viewers. Bye.